Hi everyone, my name's Jamie and I'm one of the guys on the tech team at church that helps out with the sound, visuals and live stream. You may even have been lucky enough to see me dancing around in front of the green screen on some of our live streams from time to time. I've been given the pleasure of doing this week's devotions, which come direct from things that I've seen and experienced from a hobby I love and enjoy, boating. Since I was six, I've been going on boating trips, mainly with my dad, but sometimes we convince the rest of my family to come along too. However, my stories come from holidays I've experienced since we bought our own boat. It's nothing fancy or impressive, in fact, it was effectively going for scrap when we took it on as a project to do up and enjoy, but it's taken years of work and finally we're at a stage where we can spend a week away on the river and have a great time. The boat itself is based on the Thames, one of the country's navigable rivers. By that I mean it's deep enough to put a boat on it. On many rivers in the country this is not the case. The water is shallow because it easily runs away downhill. However, many years ago on the Thames, engineers built locks and locks effectively dam the river. It allows the water in a section of the river to be deep enough to put a boat on, but this results in a water level difference on each side. The lock itself comprises of two gates with a chamber in the middle, which can be, water can be let into and out of, making a kind of boat lift. So boats can still travel from the lower section up to the higher section and vice versa. You may be familiar with this site, you do see them a lot on rivers and canals around the country. However, these locks are really fancy because they're all motorised and computerised and you can control the whole thing from a push of a few buttons. Now why am I telling you this? Well, one particular day we had made an early start to make sure that we could cover the distance we needed to get to our overnight stop. This meant we were operating the locks ourselves as the lock keeper didn't start work until 9. So we arrive at this lock and get the water level ready and correct so that we can press the button to open the gates and let our boat into the chamber. With this successfully done, we drove the boat in, shut the gates and pressed the button that would let the water in to start to raise the boat up to the high level. And nothing happened. We tried again. Still nothing. This is not great. Both my dad and I, we're, we're engineers or geeks if you prefer, and we thought that if we tried opening the gates that we'd just come through, it might reset the computer because it probably just got a bit confused. So we pressed the button to open the gates. Nothing. So effectively, we're now trapped, alone, with no one to help and nowhere to go. Although we were only to be scared, it was certainly starting to make us worry about what we should do next. How long would we be here for? We were completely helpless and there didn't seem like there was anything we could do to fix the situation. As Christians, we believe that God is always with us and for that reason there is no need to be afraid or scared even if you are trapped in a lock with a boat. Although that example is pretty niche, I'm sure I could think of many times when I felt alone and helpless, when I really should have put my faith in God. One particular piece of Bible scripture that always leaps to mind when I think about this situation is be bold and strong, banish fear and doubt, for remember the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That's from Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Personally, I find this one of the hardest things to do. I am a worrier. I will worry about the smallest things, past, present or future. Even when there's nothing that I can do, to make the situation better or change its course. And it's easy to say, don't worry about it. But I keep things playing over and over and over in my head. Round and round it goes and I can't stop thinking about it. God doesn't want us to experience fears and worries and doubts. And if we trust wholly and fully in him, there's no need to worry. We can hand our fears over to him and he will deal with them. Can you imagine how much freer our lives would be if we truly had no fears because we knew God would deal with everything. And that can sometimes be the hardest thing to do and certainly something that I struggle with. Let's pray. Lord, help us to remember you are always with us in the good times and the bad. Through thick and thin, you will look after us. Help us to know we can hand any issue over to you so that we can live lives worthy of you in your beautiful creation. Amen. A worship song I'd like to recommend today is Unspoken's In Your Hand. 
whenever I'm struggling to get thing, get through something or hand it over to God, I often think of this song. When the chorus goes, every sorrow, I leave it in your hands. Every sickness, I leave it in your hands. All my failures, I leave them in your hands. Go and have a listen to it. Going back to my story quickly, you might be wondering how we got out of that lock. Well, all we did was wait. We put the kettle on, we knew the lock keeper was going to turn up at nine o'clock and we were sure that he could fix it. And sure enough, when he arrived, he flicked a couple of switches and fixed the problem. We were soon back on our way and moving and we carried on and had a great holiday once everything had been fixed. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. I'll be back again tomorrow with another exciting story um, and I'm sure you won't want to miss it. Thanks very much.